Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Cool. What's sorry everyone. <laughs> What's up everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to the Still World podcast. My name is Scott. I'm a host, a vocalist, a vocal host. <laughs> with me is our <laughs> yes. with me is our incredibly talented guitarist friend co-host vocal Ooh, host you could say of uh, co-vocal host this is this is jake what's up i'm jake yeah yeah so welcome <laughs> if you, so okay so for everyone who's listening this is technically going to be the first podcast episode that we've done since the one we did around the release of retrograde but in reality we actually recorded quote unquote this episode like two weeks ago and just had so many technical problems with it that we couldn't use it at all so this is our second attempt <laughs> hopefully the last <laughs> attempt for this episode fingers crossed we just spent the past what hour hour no maybe like 40 minutes we just spent like the last 40 minutes like trying to figure this out so hopefully yeah hopefully we're finally good to go um but yeah so we you know the last time we did one of these for anyone who watched or listened the whole thing was kind of centered around the fact like hey we have just put out a song a video we're playing a show we have all these like announcements and we're just gonna chit chat about it um but we don't really have an agenda this time around and jake and i as we've sort of been planning you know all of our content and marketing and blah 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 we decided it might just be cool to do this on a um what i think what do we settle on i think we're going to try to do two of these a month on a yeah, bi-monthly at least, basis at least one yeah one to try two. to do two yeah depending on how you know things go with this podcast technically it in terms you know <laughs> for real and um yeah i think our plan is just to we don't want it to come across as like oh every single time we put out one of these we're just like promoting some shit like yeah it'll be used for that one the time and place is right but mm -hmm. i think we want to keep it pretty pretty chill pretty agenda free unless there's something that like we just really want to talk about and um just sort of chit chat like we have no plan for for this today we're uh we're basically just on a call hanging we're out just winging and, it yeah yeah and sharing just it chatting. with everyone yeah yeah and it feels super natural like um jake and i hop on a call like at least once a week anyway just to talk about like what we're working on the quote-unquote business of the band where that's at where it's going stuff like that so we just kind of figured this might be a cool way to sort of uh, bring bring people into that side of things, and maybe, yeah. maybe for those who are interested, you kind of get to know us a little bit better. So, get to know our secrets. Yeah, get to know our secrets. Yeah, I'm afraid of spiders. You know what I'm afraid of? Hmm. Um, it's kind of weird. It's it's not like a weird fear, but it's the way that I experience it is weird. So I'm not afraid of heights. Like, mm -hmm. put me in a glass box on the side of a size skyscraper, put me on a roller coaster, whatever. But I'm afraid of falling from a height. So if I'm in a high place and I feel as if there's a risk I could fall from that place, that's when I'm afraid. I mean, that's understandable. I don't think anyone out there would be like, dude... I fucking love falling <laughs> no, off the side of shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, you know, thankfully I've been lucky enough to the point where I haven't actually fallen from a height. But Unless there's like a bunching cable connected to you, then, you know, that's bungee jumping. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. That would, that would yeah, just like... Yeah, I can't do that. No. It would just be too much like the, the actual thing. Yeah. So like, for example, uh, when we lived in Chicago, we... You remember my old apartment building, right? Yeah. Not a very tall building. We lived on the third floor. That was the tallest floor. Um, and one night we climbed up on the roof with one of our friends. Mm -hmm. Just just cause. And uh, 
there was a wall, right? Like it's an old Chicago building. Like for those who aren't familiar, the roofs in old Chicago buildings, generally totally flat. Apartment buildings, this is not necessarily houses. Roofs are totally flat and you've got like a little bit of a wall. So maintenance people can go up there and do whatever. And there's like a, there's a wall and the wall is like maybe three feet high, maybe a little mm. bit more. So it's enough to stop you from this like tripping. Like you'd have to. <laughs> or rolling off of, of it. You have to make a bit of an effort to like fall, but we were up there and I like got up there and I like walked over to the wall and you know, I knew I wasn't going to fall, but just looking over the edge, I started to think about like, Oh my God, what if I fell off this roof? (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I feel that too. I mean, I live on the second floor and whenever I'm on the balcony, I'm like, Oh, I would die. (laughs) Even though it's like 10 feet and I would definitely survive, maybe not even break a bone, but you know, I'm I'm in the same boat with you. I don't do heights, but you know, I'm cool with going on the top of a building if there's glass walls, you know, and it's sturdy. But to like what extent in, to what extent do you not do heights? Like do you are you cool with roller coasters? I'm cool with that cuz okay. the height doesn't last the whole time. <laughs> you know, if you go up and down and stuff, you know, I'm cool with roller coasters cuz I feel safe. You know, with that with okay. that fucking thing, you know. The yeah. thing that holds you down. Fair. But fair. Um if I'm rock climbing, I can't do that. First off, I've never rock climbed in my life, so I'm assuming that I wouldn't like it, you know? See Yeah, see like I've rock I mean not like actual rocks, like I do live in Colorado, but I've haven't like climbed on mountains and shit. But you know, you go to like a gym or a facility that has like a climbing wall. Yeah. I'll do that all day. Yeah, I mean, you're attached, but, you know, I mean, also, I don't want the the harness thing around my my guy, you know? You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just weird. I, I see, how, you know, <laughs> it just looks uncomfortable. It looks like a, I don't know, like a thong. It is, <laughs> <You know? laughs> it is definitely not that. It is definitely not that. I can confirm. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you live in Colorado now. You live not too far from Boulder. Did you climb mm-hmm. Boulder yet? Is there a big Boulder or something out there? Uh, <laughs> I think there is an ironic Boulder somewhere in town, but oh, like yeah. it's not. It's not that there's like a Boulder that the town is named after, uh, as far as I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean it's a very straightforward name, but you know. yeah, yeah. Who's to say? Maybe there is. Yeah, maybe there Who is. Who knows? I'm sure someone um, knows. I have merch on. I have her t-shirt. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah. Looks good, right? Just when we say we're not necessarily here to promote anything. Yeah, well, around that note, real quick, we do have... <laughs> we <laughs> Shameless do, plug. We, <laughs> <laughs> we, do have, we do have new merch in our merch store. Uh, we got this wonderful t-shirt you can see Jake's wearing. Um, we've got a new long sleeve. We've got some new windbreakers, a tote bag. We've got mm. a sick tote bag. You can go to your, your grocery shopping and pick up that fresh produce. Um, yes. Um, and, yeah, all of our old stuff is still on there. So, yeah, if you could go pick up some of that, that'd be super sick. Just helps us out. supports what we're doing. Um, but that's not all, folks. You can go to our Instagram and send us a DM and just type the word merch and send it to us. And we'll send you a discount code for 10% off everything you buy. 10%? Boom. Boom. That's one zero. That's one zero. That's one, that's one zero with the little circle with the line and the circle. Nice. Oh. Hey, that covers tax. It does. And some shipping, you know? It does. Not that we're collecting tax money, but shh. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not. <laughs> don't tell the government I was joking I don't live in Colorado wink <laughs> yeah it still says that I live in Indiana but you know I ain't but who's, there. Who, who's to say where you live these days yeah right yeah who's to say who's to say what else is going on Jake what's new with you what do you want to share with the people Oh man, um, 
nothing else really just been uh chilling you know um working 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 to working uh doing a lot of design work and video content and yeah mm -hmm. pretty stoked on all of that um yeah well here let's give you a little bit of a of a plug so for those who don't know jake is our resident graphic designer video editor slash director slash cameraman <laughs> <laughs> slash foot rubber yeah for for anyone who did see our last <laughs> for anyone who did see our last music video there's that scene where jake where he, like jensen gets a really good foot massage uh <laughs> Jake, yeah, Jake was the foot rubber. No, but uh, Jake directed, filmed, and edited the whole shebang. Uh, so, yeah, he he's very good at all that stuff. And what are you working on currently? Yeah, well, I appreciate the hype on me. Um, whoop, whoop. I feel like a, a fire emoji right now because I'm so hyped. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I've been currently working on a bunch of digital products. Um, oh. One of my many 12,000 passions uh, is uh, uh, tech. Anything mm -hmm. to do with tech, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I created an Etsy store where mm -hmm. I sell iOS 16 icons. You know, got a couple uh -huh. colors, got some uh -huh. wallpapers, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, your boy got his first sale the other day, $4. Uh -huh. Let's go. Big money, big moves. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, um, been grinding at that, too, on the side, you know, as nice. well as creating all this sick video content we have, you know, Hell and yeah. only working on more. So much sick ideas. You know, getting Jensen to do some drums soon, you know? Yeah. Some drum content. That's what we're missing. I'm That's stoked what we need. on that. I am super stoked. He's very excited, too. Hell yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, we we have been going pretty hard on the content game recently, so. Yeah, we did that uh, two-week uh, everyday stretch. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and I think we have every plan to continue that level of consistency. Mm -hmm. If anyone's watching this and you just came across still world recently that might just seem like the norm for you and we hope that mm. <laughs> and we we've yeah. learned that it continues to be the norm but that was that was actually part of a really big effort on on our part for for everybody really because everyone was, was involved in some capacity but we sort of realized that we had fallen into the habit of really only being particularly active on social media when we had quote unquote like important shit happening mm -hmm. so excuse me so if we were putting out a new song a new video an ep new merch whatever like that was the only time we were posting anything and it would mean that every six to twelve months when we have something new to release or announce our socials would light up like uh and when i say light up i don't necessarily mean in terms of engagement but more so just in our ability to post and it would stay that way for maybe two weeks a month a month yeah yeah at the most and then we'd go radio silent until the next thing mm -hmm. and I think we always knew that that wasn't necessarily the best way to go about managing mm -hmm. our music career, but I don't know. There Maybe there was just like a, a mental block or we just mm -hmm. kind of stalled and didn't really exactly know like I think how to create content. Yeah, I think it, it was a few things. Like you mentioned, like we didn't really know how to go about social media in the game because it's always mm -hmm. changing. It's kind of... Uh, for the lack of a better term, kind of discouraging because it's like there's so much you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and with the rise of TikTok in 2020, it kind of like shifted the content game, mm -hmm. you know, to the video over photos or graphics. Sure. And I think um, 
none of us had experience with short form content. We didn't really know what it was. Um, at the time we were doing these long form podcasts, um, uh, behind the scenes stuff, you know, um, and posting a lot on YouTube, but, um, there was things that we could have done to like increase our volume of posts per month right? that we didn't know about. Um, and since, you know, the spring, the summer, we've been chatting like basically every, every week on content and mm -hmm. forming these ideas and seeing what other people are doing to inspire us. And, you know, um, as a result, create more content. And that's probably why you're seeing so many, so much content, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cause we have so many ideas and <laughs> you know, it's, it's years worth of ideas. Well, I think too, yeah. like to be, if you know, and I'll, I, I'll only speak for myself in regards to this, but I think that one thing that definitely was a factor for me is that although we do everything ourselves, and I think particularly because we do everything ourselves, um, I feel as if, let me backtrack a little bit. So, so we record all of our own music. We shoot all of our own music, music videos, edit them, blah, blah, blah. Like, I think we've only hired out for like a master on one song in the past. Mm -hmm. And we've only did it one time a couple of years ago and we haven't, haven't done that since. So, so we quite literally keep everything in house. And as well as those music videos. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that when you're doing everything yourselves, yourself these days, the caliber of content in terms of the quality of it is so high because people are so used to seeing super pro professional looking videos, super professional looking content, et cetera, et cetera. That when you're not hiring out to get that same standard as simply by paying for it, um, you put so much energy, time and attention into the crafts that are involved in creating all of that stuff yourself. And I mm -hmm. think there's part of that mindset, which for me felt like it was, bleeding into what social media was supposed to look like and almost just like a perfectionism mindset and they're like oh my god this 15 second video that we're talking about doing has to be chef's kiss and <laughs> if i can't feel confident going into it that it's gonna be mm -hmm. chef's kiss then it's not even worth doing it and i think that's sort of held me back from really just like playing my part and diving headfirst into just saying fuck it and go do all that stuff um but i think you know through conversations that especially you and i have had jake over the past several months we've you know i definitely feel as if like i've gotten past that and yeah. it feels as if we're definitely more so in this phase now where we're happy to experiment and at the end of the day like i've also realized that if something doesn't work or something flops then okay so what mm. you know like whether right. whether it's of, of course you know maybe less so when it comes to something like a song or full music video uh but particularly with just like social content okay yeah. if it only gets a handful of views whatever um, yeah, I can agree we do better that next time, you know, I, I agree that, um, like you said, like I was also in my own head, like everything we post should like in the past should be like polished and like professional mm -hmm. looking. And, um, we didn't really take into account like that, you know, like I said earlier, you know, video creation is going to take over, you know, from TikTok, and you're going to see so much more raw content that look mm -hmm. doesn't look polished and people actually changed and prefer that over polished con content because on tiktok if you see like um a video of you know that was shot on like a nice camera it might look like an ad so they might swipe right. on it but if it's like someone on an iphone with raw content or you know that kind of look 
it's going to look more in its environment. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm glad that we're testing and learning on these different types of, you know, video content that we post and see what's working, what's not. And, uh, you know, and just grow from it. Yeah, for sure. No, it's been an interesting process, but it's been fun too. Oh, so much fun. You know, so just like, fun. yeah, it's work and sometimes, well, it's work. It's um, fun work. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, I lost my thought. <laughs> like it, it's it's work but it's cool just to kind of like take a bit of pressure off and just brainstorm more ideas and be like cool what could we do like what what video will i enjoy making you know right um yeah and just being a little bit less hung up on like what are people gonna like because if we make a video mm. and people don't like it okay <laughs> Like, like what's going to happen? We like it, so that's like why what, we posted it. Yeah, like what's going to happen? Know. Nothing. We're not like, going to post something we don't like. You know, we're doing this for us, but also for, you know, people who follow us and are fans. And right. um, we're entertainers at the end of the day. We want to create valuable content um, yeah. for people to enjoy. And if there's those people who don't like it, that's cool. Do your thing. For you sure. Know? Yeah, and that's a big part of it, too. I think I, for a long time, I was like too focused on what other people think about what we put out and of course i know that can sound potentially contradictory because we're a band who's trying to grow and when it comes to our music career quite literally our job so to say right now is to tr to try and get people to like us <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> but but what i mean by that is like people are going to have their opinions regardless right and it's such a cliche to say it these days but it remains completely true that like music is and and creative content generally speaking is completely subjective there are mm. artists out there that are huge that i just don't like but just because i don't like them doesn't mean that they're bad it just means that like i don't it's like it's not for you right yeah so so i've sort of just like i've been able to adopt that in recent times and apply that to our own work so like if we put out a song and we get like a comment on something and someone's like, this sucks. Like, I'm like, okay, like fine. It's not for you. Like mm. if what we're doing, whether it's music or whether it's like social media content, it's not your thing. Then, okay. Like you're just not part of our world and that's okay. Like go do mm. your thing. We'll continue doing ours. Like what, at the end of the day, like what impact does it have on us? None. None. So so yeah so that's that's i guess the mindset like it took that if you know for me personally it took that shift over time before i was like comfortable enough in whatever sense to put ourselves out there a bit more in that regard but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're doing it speaking of which i was editing a tiktok right before we hopped on this call so that's going to be posted a little bit late but i will post it tonight nice just just saying S stoked on that one just saying yep 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 um yeah good chat what else um what else is going on in the world of still world these days that's worth mentioning um, trying to find a show trying to find a show yeah we we played our first show in two and a half years um just over a month ago end of august we played at beat kitchen in chicago with of virtue and some other great chicago bands um super fun really good to get back on stage it definitely it wet the whistle to me huh? did you say wet the whistle it wet the whistle <laughs> again so to say yeah i said it felt kind of foreign to me like it's it's been a while playing since we played a show and you know last two years were really weird Mm -hmm. you know and it felt good to be back you know but um you know more will come yeah we'll so, go back into the groove that's what we're we're trying to do i'm keeping oh fuck i just dropped a guitar pick into my keyboard between the keys uh oh <laughs> oh i got it we're good we're good um but yeah like i'm just keeping an eye out looking to see 
what's coming up, sending emails out. If you happen to see this and you're a talent buyer, hit us up. We want to play. Yeah. Yeah. What he said. But no, for real though, um, we are looking for shows. It felt so good to get back on stage. Like, um, yeah, it's interesting that you say it felt foreign to you because I find that of all the parts of being in a band, that's the thing. Like live performance is the thing that is just like puts me in the zone, so to say. Like, you know, when people talk about yeah. being in like a flow state and you're so focused on one thing that you literally lose sense of time. Yeah. Like that's exactly how I feel when, when we're playing a show. Yeah. I guess saying it was foreign to me was a bad word to use. Um, it's just been a while. I, I guess I could mm-hmm. just say I was rusty, you know, sure. I was a little sloppy on the guitar, but that's all right. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's just, I, man, since I was 16 up until I was 21, I was just in that groove of playing shows, you mm-hmm. know, so many times with so many of my previous bands and us. And, mm-hmm. um, I guess that two and a half year break was just like, damn. <laughs> yeah. And also, a- and also you and I worked out two days prior, you made me do legs <laughs> and my legs were so <laughs> fucked. Dude, it <laughs> killed me. <laughs> and the second day is always worse. So that's you so know. funny. And, and that was the second day was the day of the show. It was. Oh, that's Man. hilarious. I'm never doing legs a week before a show. <laughs> I'm giving myself a week. I'm not doing that. <laughs> All right, listen, I promise it gets easier. Yeah, but also I haven't been in the gym since then. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Well, you know what you're doing tomorrow morning. What I'm doing tomorrow morning? Yeah, you're going to the gym, doing legs. Oh, dude, you know what I'm doing tomorrow morning? I'm getting up at 8.30, and then I'm going to get into work at 9. Dang. Yeah. I'm not a morning workout kind of guy. I'd rather do it at night, like after work. That's so late. That's so late. Do you get up at 8.30 every morning, like 30 minutes before work? Then I eat breakfast, brush my teeth. Mm, I couldn't do it. You know, how early do you get? Out? Get up. I start work at eight. Oh, that's understandable. And yeah, uh, I work from home. Same for for reference. Um, but my alarm goes off at five a.m. Jesus. Yeah, and I no generally I don't get out of bed until like five thirty. But I need that like I'm one of those people that needs like a thirty minute buffer from like same from the time that my alarm goes off. I'm not awake enough to get out of bed until like half an hour. So my alarm probably goes off like two or three times in 30 minutes and then I'm ready to get out of bed. So So you get up at 5 a.m. So I'm out of bed at like 5.30 most days. Damn. Yeah. Why so early? Um, Is that something you've been doing lately? Like trying to get up super, super early? Get more stuff done? So I, I initially got into the habit out of necessity because although I work at 8 a.m. now um a few months ago but when I was in a different role at my company um I I worked a f- I worked 4 by 10 shifts so I only worked 4 days a week but I worked 10 hours a day and that meant that I was starting work at 6 a.m. So yeah. at that point in time, I was waking up at 4.30 to be online at 6. Because um, I need to like just take some time for myself in the morning, like sit, read a little bit, eat breakfast, whatever, you know. Uh, and so I sort of like was adjusted and used to waking up super early because I had to do that for work for a long time. And then I got a different position at work and my schedule changed uh but i sort of just like didn't get out of the habit of getting up early and it's actually worked out really it's turned out to be something really positive in the sense that i've been you know whether it's your thing or not totally fine but i've been really into like personal productivity for for a long time now well not a long time let's say a few months 
So like I have certain like habits, things that I like I'm trying to do every single day for myself. Just stuff to work on. Like I'm trying to learn to code. Um, I'm trying to become fluent in French. I've spoken some degree of French for a long time, but I've never been 100% fluent. So that's that. That's a goal. Nice. Um, I used to love to read, but f- like for a number of years, I got out of the habit of reading, and so I uh, I have a like habit, quote unquote, like tell myself, hey, I have to read every single day now. So there's there's like there's four things every single day I have I have to do. Um, just in terms of like personal habits and like personal goals, I have to spend some time on my course that I'm learning to code in. Uh, I have to do some French. I have to read a little bit, whether it's, um, like a fiction book or whether it's something about personal development. Typically I have two books going at once. Typically I have like one personal development book, which is generally an audio book. And then I have like a fiction book that I read just for chill. Um, and that's usually a physical book I read before bed. And then I, the fourth thing I have to do every day is, uh, meditate. So nice. So it's only four things, but when you think about the time that some of those things take, like if I want to make meaningful progress on my coding course or meaningful progress in learning French, like realistically, I have to be trying to put in at least like 30 minutes into each of those things every single day. And by the time I work a full shift, like my quote unquote nine to five, by the time I get off work, it's like my mental, my mental energy is so depleted. It's difficult some days to actually set time aside to do those things that are just important to me. I'm the same way. Yeah. So, so creating time for myself to do one or two of those things first thing in the morning has been awesome. So that's, that's pretty much like why I wake up as early as I do now, man. So that's awesome. Yeah. I, um, I got a, I, I've been wanting to build some better habits. Um, I found this app called Headway. Ever heard of it? Yeah, I actually, I use that. I use that to build my reading list. Nice. Yeah, I've been, I just downloaded it today. I literally got an ad on Instagram. I'm like, oh, that's mm. sick. So sick. Yeah. Love ads. That's how I, fa- that's how I found it too. So yeah. I do, so I don't consider that to be like my reading habit, but I right. do generally read every free book preview for those who don't know headway is an app that gives you gives you like uh book summaries so it's all about like personal development in some way shape or form and it covers personal development is a very broad descriptor like it covers a Mm -hmm. whole range of different shit everything from like covers like finance personal relationship to finance to habits all sorts of stuff and it just it picks if you have the free account it just picks a random book for you every day and it gives you like a 15 minute summary of the book and I generally read all of them and then if I like it I add it to my reading list so I at some point in time I'll come back and like probably read the whole book probably get the audio book and like listen to the whole thing nice um there's some most most of the stuff on there's pretty good some of it's meh uh there's some hot mm-hmm. trash on there too <laughs> I I um I did like six summaries today six books um mm-hmm. after work while I was cleaning and uh, there was mostly like good, good stuff on there, but yeah, there was like a couple on like, you know, this is, this is pointless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. so without going too deep into this side of things, us at still world are all pretty progressively minded people. Um, we'll, yes. we'll just leave it at that. And there was one on there the other day that was written by a, uh, staunchly conservative, uh, personality who often appears on Fox News, and I was like, mm, mm, no, that's gonna be a no go. It's gonna be a no, <laughs> no for me. Don't care what he has to say. So, <laughs> so yeah, I s- skipped over that one. But most of the stuff on there is yeah. uh, is not politically natured. It's just sort of like, here's some good shit for you to know yeah. about how the human mind, how the human mind works. And yeah, it's been good. What app do you use for audiobooks? I've been meaning to ask you. Um, it, it depends. Um, it depends. Sometimes uh, it's either Apple books or audible. Nice. I think, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, Spotify is coming out with audiobooks. 
Yeah, they are. I saw that. I saw yeah. that too. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'll, so so Phoenix, uh, who's my fiance, uh, she has an Audible membership, and sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes she won't use all of her credits, and she'll have some like a credit or two left over that she just like hasn't been able to find anything she wanted to listen to. And she'll be like, Hey, go in and grab something on audible if you want. So if that's the case, I'll be like, yeah, for sure. Sweet. And I'll download something. Um, otherwise if that's not an option, I'll just go and buy the book on Apple books and listen to it there. Nice. So, so yeah. Um, right now I'm listening, listening to fuck. I can't remember the name. (laughs) (laughs) I'm <laughs> uh, listening to Crushing It by Gary V. Gary V. What a guy. It's good. It's good. It's uh, nice. That's more like just motivational content, especially because we're so like social media focused right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to... This has just turned into a few minutes of me giving you book recs, okay? Dude, hell yeah. Bring them out. All right. All right, hold on. I'm going to give you some some real winners. Okay, one of the best ones I read this year was Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you're interested in building better habits for yourself, you have to read that book. Mm. You have What's to it called it. again? Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits. Yep. I listened to about half of the audiobook and the, it was really good, but I realized about halfway through that I was sort of just listening to it and not absorbing it as well as I wanted to because a book like that I wanted to to actually take in the content and make use of it for myself and just just whatever it is about the way that it was written the audiobook just like wasn't clicking um so i bought the the physical book and it's out on my bookshelf um and it was sick like i read that read that book and it was great uh and it's sort of set that's actually the book that sort of set me up on this whole being into personal development mm-hmm. um and it's generally it's just been very healthy i think like it's helped me build habits it's helping me to learn new shit it's honestly been a huge factor in like how consistent and hard working we've we've been as a band as far as like my side of things go mm-hmm. um i definitely if i hadn't read that book i wouldn't have had the drive to like get on a weekly call and plan out social media content and like figure all of our shit out like as like in advance um so very very glad i encountered that book it's changed a lot for me um so yeah i'd recommend you check that one out without going into a ton of other shit i'll give you one more one another one that i would check out would be uh building a second brain oh i have that one yeah by uh tiago forte um that book's kind of crazy that book blew my mind. That's like an information management system. So for those who might be interested in this type of thing, just like super quick summary. The human brain, I, this this figure might not be like the correct number, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to illustrate regardless. The human brain can only absorb something like 32 gigabytes of data a day. And bef- before there's just like zero retention happening. Or maybe it's, no, you know what it is. I think it's like on average we digest as human beings 32 gigabytes of information a day. Yeah, I eat a thumb drive a day. Yeah. (laughs) Digest 32 (laughs) gigs. (laughs) uh, Are you assuming I'm a robot? Yes. (laughs) Beep boop bop. Through like videos and podcasts and social media content and blah, blah, blah. And of course not all of that is meant to be remembered. But for the stuff that is meant to be remembered, like we hit a capacity and we all reach a point during the day where it's like our brain just doesn't remember shit as well anymore as as it could potentially so the idea of building a second brain is that you're gonna hand off the job of actually remembering all that shit to a computer because a computer has no problem remembering all that shit Mm -hmm. so long story short anytime i encounter a piece of information that i want to remember like if i'm listening to a podcast or these books that I'm reading, or if you and I have a conversation and you say something and I'm like, shit, I need to make sure I remember this for our next chat Mm -hmm. without hesitation. Like, even if I'm pretty confident, I'm not going to forget it. Like I've gotten into the habit now of taking out my phone and I open up a note 
and I just write it down. Whether I can naturally remember it or not, that's not the point. The point is now I have something that makes it impossible to forget. Mm -hmm. And so then every, at the end of every week, I go into my notes and I look at like all the notes that I've taken throughout the week and I organize them into folders based on what the point of the note was. So if you and I have, we're having a conversation about like a new social media idea for still world, then that goes into my still world folder and et cetera, et cetera. Like I've got folders for different shit that I'm working yeah. on and then like just different general areas of my life. And so now these are all organized by their usefulness. And next time you and I are having a conversation, you know, say we're having a conversation in six months time and we're like, Oh, like what ideas do you have for the band for marketing or for social media? Like I don't have to go and do brand new research every single time. I just mm -hmm. hop into my notes and I go to the still world folder and I can either search for a keyword or I just scroll through it and I'll be like, Oh, I had this idea months ago and we never did anything with it. Let's do that. And it's the idea is just like something else remembers my shit for me. So every time I need a piece of information, I don't have to go look it up from scratch. Mm -hmm. And it's been sick. Yeah. That seems that that seems really um, helpful. It's good. It's good. At, <laughs> it's I know it's it's kind of nerdy like productivity shit, but um, it's hey, actually I'm here been for it. <laughs> it's been good for music too. Like, uh, we, okay, I guess we, like the the last time we did this podcast, it didn't release. So yeah, so we're writing a new song right now. We don't know when it's going to be out. Most of the in instrumental is done. Um, I've started working on lyrics and vocal ideas and stuff. It's been a slow process, but over the past several months, like sometimes I'll just randomly have an idea for a lyric and it might not necessarily be for the song. It could just be something that comes to mind and I'm like, Oh, that would be a sick lyric. And I put it in my notes. And so the other day, as I was kind of like trying to create some dedicated time to work on this song, um, the first thing that I did was <clears throat> go into my notes where I have, where I know I have all these ran random lyric ideas and I just took everything and dumped it into a dedicated note where I'm going to write the lyrics for this song. And so bef bef before I have even technically and formally started to write the lyrics for a track, um, I know I already have like somewhere between five and 10 different potential starting points, which is super helpful. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited for that song too. It's going to be a gonna banger. Be sick. Oh, heavy, it's heavy AF. Fun fact. It's our first song we've ever had. That's in drop D and <laughs> double drop D. It is. <laughs> yeah. It goes from D to double D. Yeah. All of our songs so far have ranged somewhere between G drop G and drop F. Yeah. Basically just drop G and drop F. Mm -hmm. Just those two. Was there a G? Um, was there a... a no, G those? sharp? G sharp? No. I don't uh, so. No. Unless something off A New Beginning was in G sharp. But I, I think that whole EP was in drop G. Then Hollow was the first song in drop F. Mm. And then we kind of stuck with F for a while. Had a couple songs in G, like Suffocate. Mm -hmm. Um basically everything on dark matters and drop f true so, yeah and uh yeah so now we're going to drop d way up there <laughs> and, then and then double and, and then double <laughs> drop d way down there to hell you know <laughs> yeah 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 it dan, did, dan did a fucking great job yeah it writing killer. that song it's so sick yeah, and it's pretty different, I guess, for... I mean, it's still metal. It's still metal core for sure. But it definitely... When it gets finished and people hear it, hear it I definitely think that for people who are familiar with what we've done so far, that's definitely going to be a song where it's like, ooh, this is different. Yeah, the, for the sure. Tu the tuning is a factor. Um, like, just tonally, it sounds different in that regard. But it's also just sort of a different track as far as like how some parts of it are written. And I'm pretty stoked because that's going to, it's, it's set me up to do some interesting stuff vocally. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it's going to sort of be like an in some in some ways it's going to be like an experimentation vocally and i'm really excited to see what comes of it what kind of things do you want to experiment like with vocally like anything you could like describe or yeah i guess so um yeah so i mean it's still being written so nothing set in stone and of course you know once you get in once you actually get behind the mic to go record stuff like it's a totally different ball game. Shit, shit yeah. just changes. Like, because sometimes you write something and you might even demo it, and you're like, "Yeah, this sounds good," and then you get into the studio <laughs> to actually do the song, like, however much longer later, and you hear the thing that sounded good in your writing and demoing process, and all of a sudden you're like, "What was I thinking?" <laughs> right yeah <laughs> this is so bad or and sometimes it just doesn't even make sense so so at this point it's anyone's game really but some stuff that i've been thinking about um the like the core we i won't give like anything away thematically but like the chorus right, yeah. like instrumentally is just super big like it's a it's a you know huge chorus like um like if we if you wanted to it's the type of song you could play in an arena or like a fucking like festival and it would go over mm. super well um and so just trying to think something i something i try to consider when i'm writing lyrics is i try to picture like where is this where do i picture this song being played and based on what the instrumentals sound like and then what type of vocals are going to like fit that really well so mm. like when i heard this song when i heard the chorus in particular one thing i the thing I thought of was like, oh, this would be so sick if this was something I heard at a festival. So let me try to write the lyrics to complement that feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. And you think of like festivals and especially like in like the metal world, you know, the, the types of songs you might stereotypically associate with that environment are just like really big choruses and stuff that people can really easily like chant and sing along to. Um, and so I'm the, with the chorus, I'm I'm definitely going to try to do something like that. And that's one reason why I think it's going to kind of be a different feel compared to anything we've done. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, like I've personally have been working on my own vocal ability a lot over the past uh, like three months in particular. And I'm, you know, over the past like month, especially, it's, it's like, I wish I could do some, like had learned some of this stuff before our show, but mm -hmm. I've learned, learned a lot about my voice over the past month. And even though some stuff is not like good enough to go record just yet, um, I'm definitely learning how to produce some new sounds nice. and, um, like I'm, I'm just super excited to like get some of that onto a record and keep practicing mm -hmm. like in the lead up to going to record this new song and it's definitely still going to be a still world song for people who are aware of and like our you know current releases mm -hmm. um we're just gonna but, sound more evolved yeah it's just gonna have like a different yeah. flair to it for sure yeah mm -hmm. and uh oh, i just have ideas dude like we'll see what gets written um, I do have to like one other thing like I really like the idea of like whether or not it's actually going to work when I go to write it for the track is a completely different story but I'm really interested by, by the idea of writing like like something in, in a verse that's very like rap Fast. inspired yeah it's still metal yeah. but like um, you know there's there's bands that are doing that now that I really admire for you know just the types of stuff they've been able to implement within the metal world and um as i've gotten like into like more hip-hop and rap music over the past like several years on and off um i always just find myself being really in in like admiration of like how clever uh something as quote-unquote simple as cadence can can be Right. Um, right. Like, I mean, rap is all fucking cadence, uh, and just like the placement of words within a song. It's just, it's such an art form in and of itself and not something that I have always been particularly focused on when it comes to writing lyrics and vocals for our band or for any band I've been in. Um, and 
it's obvious how powerful that can be because you just have to like look at some of the most popular songs in the world and the thing that is just so masterful within those songs is the clever use of vocal cadence mm -hmm. and so just you know it's not something i have a honed in skill for yet but i'm definitely like very curious to experiment with that sort of stuff and not make it like a rap metal song but yeah like i'm not gonna i'm not saying we're gonna sound like fucking ghost man meets arena rock all of a sudden <laughs> dude i would fuck with that but um ghost man's sick but i i guess the best way to put it is my my musical influences are evolving and i'm i'm, I'm excited to see what comes of that hell yeah yeah i'm very excited to see what you come up with and you know you need some some lows i got you of I'm, course. I'm, yeah hey i'm getting there too you getting there oh i'm getting there baby yeah let's go so false chord dude i don't know what to call it yeah <laughs> does it sound like mine or is it like no it's not as low as bit. yours it's not as low as gotcha. yours but also i, mean, I guess it depends because we have different voices yeah vocal so it's, right. it's always going to be yeah it's going to be but like i meant thing. i meant in terms of uh in terms of uh like technique but um, yeah, you say you didn't know but that's all right if we when we get together next in person we, if, we can hop in my car you know if probably another drive probably <laughs> is yeah i don't know like i i do like on paper right like i do understand the difference between like false chord and fry screaming if we're talking mm -hmm. about the more traditional methods that get talked about um and if i can hear one and probably tell you like which it is but i've been i've i don't know like my voice feels kind of weird in the sense that for so long i've just been doing like the the yell thing that now that i'm trying to like apply more formal technique to what i'm doing i'm i'm still producing similar sounds but i'm doing it differently and the process of thinking about how i used to do things versus thinking about how i'm trying to do things now just kind of like mm -hmm. i don't know it confuses me right because you were so used to one way of doing it yeah you it have to me. break that habit build a new habit stick to it on average it takes 66 days to form a new habit mm -hmm. yeah um so so you're on the track you're on the right on the track, track if if you're you know sticking to that kind of style and technique and you know mm -hmm. i mean that's something i want to do i just haven't found time to hop in my car you know go for a drive and and do that you know mm -hmm. and like every other day but uh that's one of the things i want to get back into on a regular basis nice yeah so yeah so yeah so i don't really know if it's false chord it's it's if it's, it sounds cool that's it you know it sounds cool it sounds yeah it sounds cool and you're not and i'm you're not, not hurting I'm not hurting myself no yeah. since i've started like focusing on my technique more um like i wasn't hurting myself before because uh as i learned to scream and do the more like yelly pitched thingy mm -hmm. whatever we want to call it um there was definitely a learning curve and there was times that i had hurt myself but i figured out how to mm -hmm. do it without hurting myself whether people are were into that or not whatever don't care um mm -hmm but like I was comfortable doing it. It was more of a stamina thing than anything else. Like I would find my diaphragm or my vocal cords getting tired more so than like hurting myself. And that was my indication. Like, okay, I need to stop before I hurt myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was all good. Like I had pretty good stamina before we took that super long break from, from practices and live shows. Yeah. Um, but it still wasn't like completely ideal. Like even though I was comfortable doing it for what it was, since I have started to sort of readjust my focus on how I approach all that stuff and start to reconsider what's possible as far as what the sounds I can personally produce. Um, it's, it's just sort of like shifted my perspective in that like, okay, now I can go produce similar sounds, but I'm doing it differently. And it's way easier than I ever thought it was going to be like, mm -hmm. So we, t so, you know, as a band and based on like where, where we're at these days, like our sets are per typically 30 minutes, right? 
And prior to taking a two and a half year break from shows, like we practiced twice a week and generally at a practice, like I could do two full run throughs of our set back to back. So you could say like I could like scream for like an hour or all mm-hmm. or, or close somewhere between like maybe 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the day. And that was like my, my limit, right? Like I knew if I was coming up on like somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour, like that's when my stamina was going to start taking a back seat. And I just had to be careful um, about what I was doing. But just, just based on how I feel now compared to how I remember that feeling, um, like I'm still learning, I'm still practicing, but I know already that when I get this technique to that same caliber that I was at with that past technique, dude, I could probably, I anticipate maybe being able to knock out, like if we ever had to play like an hour and a half set, like mm. cool, easy. Oh, sick. Hell yeah. <laughs> because it's just, because I've found the way to produce these sounds and it just put in, in, in a way that puts less strain, like on everything here, you know, and tell the people where you get this valuable information. <laughs> yeah. I've gone through a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff I just was sort of self-taught. Um, I did the whole Melissa cross the Zen of screaming DVDs back in the day. Um, they didn't really click with me. I didn't really get it. Uh, me neither. You know, I made nothing I, for me. I wonder if I'd get more from it now that I have like a better sense, like of how it, all this works. But mm-hmm. yeah, at the time it didn't really work. Um, so I gave up on that. Just taught myself a lot of shit. Went through a lot of self doubt, doing shit wrong, hurting my voice <laughs> <laughs> until I figured out like, okay, this is how this. You gotta. Is. I mean, you yeah. gotta do it. You gotta try things, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't yeah. work. Just don't do that again, kind of thing. You know. Right. So, yeah. but more recently, um, yeah, you introduced me to this dude on Instagram probably mm-hmm. last year. David, Gotta be last year. So, yeah. Something da- like that. David Benitez, who is a vocal coach under the company name of Extreme Vocal Institute. Um, and he he's just a super talented dude like himself. Yeah. But... The way, so he has like courses online. You can take lessons with him, whatever. But like we, we signed up for his, uh, like online courses and I watched that a few times and I was practicing a lot of the stuff he was talking about and whatever it was about the way he explained it and the way he demonstrated it compared to anything I've like watched in Mm -hmm. the past about trying to better understand, you know, vocals, it, it just clicked and it was like, Oh that's how this works there's nothing better than evi it's yeah it's foolproof Mm -hmm. and even if there's stuff on there that like i don't think i personally am going to be able to do um or maybe the stuff that i'm not necessarily like interested in learning just based on personal taste like inhale screaming (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know like that's all well and good for the people who are interested in it some of that stuff just doesn't like it's not the vocalist i necessarily aim to be Mm -hmm. but for the stuff that I have taken an interest in, like just the way he talks about it and pieces it together from like the very beginning into turning it into a more complex process. It it just made so much sense. And I was like, yeah, okay. I feel like I can actually go do something with this. And that's a way with words. Yeah. When it comes to describing that stuff and Mm -hmm. you know, I don't have the membership currently like it expired, but the foundations from all of the videos I watched in that course has given me a lot to work with as far as like my individual practice. And in the past few weeks, as I've been practicing and like figuring stuff out about my voice by myself, a lot of that was made possible by the concepts that I learned from, from his course. So, Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're a vocalist and you want to improve, you know, we don't know the dude. It's not a sponsor, it's a sponsor situation by any means. But if you are interested in uh, learning to scream or just want to become a better vocalist, like in my case, I can't recommend it highly enough. Yeah, 100%. So He's, he's the god. He's the goat and the god at the same <laughs> time. He's the goat god. 
The goat god. The vocal host, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, um, we could probably sit here and chat all night, but we've been doing this for an hour. Wow, it hit an hour. When we start, when we started out, like, so, so, so real quick, I won't keep uh, keep you for too long. Um, I work on another podcast outside of this um, called the Drop Tune Podcast. It's all about music business and marketing and stuff, and just brainstorming ideas to go experiment with and grow your music career. But that that podcast is so meticulously planned. Like whenever. We go to do an episode. I have a whole episode plan. I write out notes. I do research. I'm like, this is all the stuff we're going to go talk about. Um, in contrast to this, where we had, like just hopped on a call and we hadn't discussed at all what we wanted to talk about. It was literally just like, you want to do a podcast Monday night? Yeah, sick. Okay. Monday night comes. Here's the link. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's oh, yeah. that's all that goes into this and when we first started out tonight i was just like what are we gonna talk about <laughs> <laughs> it was just like last time but last time we winged it and it was fine yeah, yeah so. like i don't want this to just be one of our marketing calls like i don't want to just start talking about content ideas that we're gonna do next nah. week and stuff like that we're just so, gonna chill and talk about whatever we can so talk just, about anything besides music you know just chat just chat you know? yeah yeah, so yeah, we're we're over an hour in now, and would you look at that? We had plenty to talk about. So go us. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me. I forgot we had this. Sorry, I was just trying to look past my camera. Oh, the yeah. Do so. It. Wait, wait. Here we go. Go us. Fuck. Hey. <laughs> It's so loud in my headphones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, we got to turn that down a little bit. You're going to scare people with that. <laughs> Can I tell a joke? Can yeah. I tell a joke? Can you do that? All right. <clears throat> Give me a joke. Ha um, wait, 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 wait. How does a cat like its steak cooked? I don't know. How does a cat like its steak cooked? Rare. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Th thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The app we're using has a soundboard, <laughs> so... <laughs> Dude, we gotta get um, Scotty P in there. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. <laughs> that was so good. You gotta add that. We have to. Yeah, you have to find some more sounds. Add them in there for next time. We'll have some fun. Yeah, we can create our own. But yeah, so we'll leave it there. Um, for everyone who has made it this far into an hour of absolute nonsense, uh, thanks, thanks so much for <laughs> for listening, for watching. Um, if you are listening to this on your favorite podcast app. Whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, follow the show, um, so you're tuned in for next time. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. We are going to post one or two of these every single month, but we also have other YouTube content that we work on, um, so you, you don't want to miss that. Um, if you haven't already, go listen to Retrograde, watch the music video. Just go listen to all of our music. Just stream it all. You know, just make a Spotify playlist right now and just put our whole discography in it and run it, it on a loop all day. Do it. All day. And then you can go l watch my rain videos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please watch my rain videos. They're two hours long. Gonna, we're not going to talk about that. We'll save that one for next time. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. But yeah, everyone, thanks so much. Um, buy for, our merch. Yeah, buy our merch. Um, Do it. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. 10% DMS yeah. merch on Instagram. Yeah. But yeah, no, we really appreciate everyone who's who's listening. So we will catch you next time on the Still World Podcast. Bye. Ooh. Bye.